What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're gonna be doing some brief impressions of a game called Top Dog. I think this game is pretty rad and apparently this developer has put out two previous games that were basically kind of the same thing and has been sort of iterating on that idea ever since. And honestly with Top Dog it caught my eye because I was crawling through the Steam directories as I tend to do looking for anything worth playing this week and I started fiddling around with this one. I noticed it had a lot of reviews and they were like universally positive. Like, the few reviews that it had, people were raving about it. So we're diving on in today, we're checking it on out. I played it for a couple hours prior to the recording of this video. We're gonna do some impressions, we're gonna talk about the things I do like, the things that I don't like. For those of you that don't know what Top Dog is, Top Dog is a game where you're like some kind of, I don't know if you're like an AI jet, or like what you are, but you're some kind of fighter jet, alright? You are a fighter jet, and for really undisclosed reasons, guys are trying to murder you. And so you just kind of fly around. You can definitely see there's kind of like some influences of vampire survivors in here because it's really just a game about dogfighting in waves once you boil on down to it. And every single enemy you kill is going to drop a currency called scraps. Uh, if you go collect those, it will level you up. It will make you stronger. It will make you more likely to succeed in the future. You get little perks every time you level up that make your jet more rad or make it more evasive or make it faster or able to kind of like... You know, I guess take more damage or deal more damage. Really entirely up to you what you want to put your points into. There's also some stuff here to unlock. I do think that the game has some pressing flaws that really need to be looked into. But by and large, I found it to be a really satisfying game to play with regards to both the way it sounds, the way that it feels, the way that it flies. Here's our first level up. Uh, we can take Iceman. This one's locked. For whatever reason in this game, you can get perks in your perk spread that you have not unlocked yet and thus are unable to actually click on. This is one of my complaints about the game. Perks that you haven't unlocked yet, they, they should not be offered as part of your random offerings when you level up. That's got to stop right there. All three things here should have utility. They should be things that you can actively take right now. And then I wouldn't mind if there was like a little sidebar that had all the perks that you hadn't unlocked yet and you could kind of like mouse over them and figure out what the achievements are that you need to get in order to unlock those. Because this game does have an achievement based system. I'm going to make that clear because some people like that and some people don't like that. But this game has an achievement based system to unlock like new items and new weapons and things. So if you're, if you're in the habit of playing bad over like long periods of time you may not ever actually unlock those things i've been struggling I, I unlocked a bunch of stuff oh we got a frigate on the field huh that's worrisome don't like that all right oh i'm about to get missiled out okay uh, so this is probably a good time to talk about how your health works bottom left hand corner you can see two triangles and a 100 percent next to it the two triangles uh, they are your armor plates and the 100% is how much of that armor plate is left. So technically you have multiple health bars in this game. And in having multiple health bars, they break and you can't really get them back. You will occasionally be challenged to sort of like these aeronautical feats, I guess, of like daring and of like bravery. And if you do those things, you will get your armor back, but they tend to be really dangerous and you tend to be risking a lot of damage in order to do it. With these frigates right here, you really got to be careful about them because they like to do a big spread of missiles when you go past them. And so you need to kind of do like these flybys. But what can ultimately happen with these big frigates is that they also have kind of like this large millimeter cannon on top. And so you kind of want to come in like low so that the cannon can't really see you. At least that's how I like to do it. I'm just going to fire some missiles at them and hope we get a collision here. Whatever you do, do not strafe and do not stop while you're fighting with one of these frigates. We got two seconds until the next wave comes in. So this guy needs to get dealt with, like, now. Uh, we do have a lot of fighters on the field, so let's go ahead and see if we can get rid of a couple of these nerds. There we go. A couple of them machine gunned down. We do have some missiles coming our way, so we're going to want to deal with that shortly. Just kind of weave our way through the center of all the enemies here. Now, with a game like this, I think that when you're invoking titles like Afterburner or you're invoking titles like Ace Combat, I think the big thing that people are going to be concerned with is does the game feel good to play? And I will say, yes, it does. I think that they've got the mouse sensitivity, and I think they've also got the control scheme dialed in. There's not a whole lot there to dial in other than, like, the hand feel of the game like how does the game feel when the mouse is in your hand and you're actively trying to pull off some maneuvers and they've got that down the game feels pretty good 
go ahead and put a little bit more damage on this guy. I may have to go after him on the side compartments. I don't know. Some enemies have very specific damage spots you got to go after. With regards to the way that the map is laid out, this game is eternal horizontally. So as long as you're moving in the horizontal, you're good. However, vertically, there is a cap on like how high and how low you can go. And so watch out for that because if you hit that high altitude or you hit that low altitude, it basically brings your ship to a crawl and you're just going to get chewed on. This is sort of exacerbated by the issue that the AI does not have that boundary. They can just kind of like fly through it. Yeah, I think I got to strafe them on both sides. All right, we got to get them on the port side now. We got them on the starboard. We just got to get them on the port. Unfortunately, with his rotation that he's doing right now, that angle might be a little bit challenging to hit. If I can get the cannon off the top, that'd make my life easier too. Oh, we killed him. Nice. Give him my scraps and I'll be on my way, baby. Uh, we've got a AC-60 that we can unlock for our next level up, or we can get time dilation whenever we achieve a target lock. I'd probably say the AC-60 is the best choice right here. That's just me personally. Uh, it's going to change our gun into basically like a big slapper cannon uh, that hurts the hell out of anything that it hits. And I've had really good luck with the AC-60 in playing the game and just like knocking out because the game has different grades of enemies. So you're not just fighting like normal mooks the entire time you're playing this game. Uh, you are going to be fighting kind of upgraded elite style characters as well called rogues and interceptors. And they tend to take like an ungodly amount of punishment while also being very agile and able to screw with you pretty aggressively. We're going to dive down low that way. Hopefully not eat a missile right here. We need to pay very careful attention to this frigate. Because this frigate is going to be a big threat to us if we don't deal with him. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get a little bit more damage on it. We're getting hit. Oh! Okay, all right. I feel a little bit better about the situation. I thought I was getting hit right there. I chose to bank at a really weird time. It appears to have worked out, though. Hey, frigate's down. Give me my health back. Good. Uh, the entire point of this game, by the way... Never mind. Apparently, there's frigate missiles still flying around in one of them hit me. Uh, the missiles in this game, in my opinion, are a little bit too agile. I, I feel like the missiles can make turns that are just like defying the laws of physics. Like there's no way a missile makes that turn. But then again, I go back on it all the time too, because like sometimes it feels like the jets are able to outmaneuver missiles. No problem. And I'm just like, okay, I just want to, Ooh, I'm dead. Okay. I probably should have taken a speed boost right there. We did not get a good score. We got a very, very bad score. But if you take a look at the leaderboards, I'm actually like number three right now. I'm not doing terrible. There's only like 20 people that play this game. So don't let me get too large of a head. But I will say of like the 25 people that play this game, I am number three amongst them. I had really, really good run a little while ago that I was super happy with where I was juggling my combo just perfectly. But with regards to the controls, the controls are pretty buttery. They're very arcadey. This is not a flight sim game that you have to worry about feeling like something like Microsoft Flight Sim. You're not going to get that vibe from it. I would assume that the game is enabled uh, for using a flight stick if you desire to do so. And taking a look at the game's options, it appears as though some people online have said that it'll work with a HOTUS. The developer says that if you could use a HOTUS in his previous games, you can use it in this one. So I'm guessing it's baked into the engine already since he's been making various iterations of this game for a while. There's another level up. Uh, let's talk about, I like being faster. But what this one does right here is it increases the amount of armor that a plate has to 150. And since we have all three of our plates left right now, that's probably a great way to effectively get a fourth plate. Because we have three plates of 150 each. So three times 50, which is the bonus we just got, basically gave us like a fourth plate to keep us alive a little bit longer. Let's get back to running and gunning over here. We got a strong day ahead of us, all right? After we get done dogfighting, we got to go play volleyball on a beach shirtless, you know, while wearing expensive watches. All right, we got to go high-five some guys and lock arms after winning at volleyball uh, in order to celebrate our aerial superiority. Maybe get some Kenny Loggins going out here. I forgot to mention that if you want to get this game, it is in early access. The developer is still actively working on this title, so it's not done right now. So the developer has admitted on the title page that there are a number of balance issues with the game that he feels needs to be worked on. And that's his active focus right now is trying to balance the AI and the way that they dogfight and like the speed of missiles and stuff like that. So if you find things in this game that are a little bit unbalanced, that's why I'm being a tad hesitant about being like, well, I feel like the missiles are too agile sometimes. 
Like, it's one of those things where I don't want to speak on it because the developer has said it's right there on the title page when you log in. Like, hey, I'm working on balance right now. The game has all of, like, the functional parts in there, but I haven't balanced them all yet, and I'm working on it with feedback. So there you go. But the game is in early access. They seem to be focused with getting content in right now and with getting further balance passes done. I want all three of those scraps. Thank you. I... Yeah, I'm going to take the AC-60 before they start showing up with giant gunships. Uh, there is not... Oh, no, dude. He came in kind of close. Okay, let's blow him up and fly by. We are faster this time around, so we might be okay. Uh, we are quite a bit speedier this time around than we were on the last run. And I find that speediness can help. Let's see if I can shoot him down on the way by. If I can get that with some... Oh, that was risky right there. I didn't know if we were going to make it. Like, so what happens is it fires a missile pack of, like, 12 missiles in a circle around itself. And if you're not fast enough to fly through the middle of it and get out the other side, by the time the missiles do, they do, like, kind of like this little converging matrix thing where they, like, dive in on you if you're not fast enough on the flyby. And it's just, like, a huge problem. As you can see right there, they're trying to chase us down. Uh, let's go ahead and put out some missiles. He shouldn't have any guns left, I don't think. So we should be kind of good here. He should just have, like, missiles. And so as long as we can deal with the missile packs, I feel like we're in solid shape. Go ahead and, like, see if you can get him, too. Oop, this is a good one right here. There we go. We done got... Oh, he got the missiles off, though. We might get hit. Uh, the missiles missed us. Good. The missiles did not turn into hittles. That's a really, really good thing. Let's spin around, and we'll finish off this little last doodle over here. Unfortunately, we're having a terrible time with our combo meter. Just a, a real, real bad time with it. So our score is not going to crest enormous heights, I don't think. Oh, good. We're on the rogue level where these guys get super hard. So rogues are basically upgraded versions of the normal fighter, and they are pretty much the reason why... They are more or less the reason why I take the AC-60 on every single run. Is because with, like, the normal gunship guns, or the normal, like, minigun or whatever, I just, I feel like I can't bury the... Wow, they are really maneuvering on me right now. I gotta do something. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but they're out maneuvering me like crazy. Alright, this guy right here. You. I want you. Oh, I thought I lost a plate right there. Everything went red, man. Sometimes when it goes red, I always assume that I just lost a play. I don't want to fight up and down with these guys, like, at all. Because if I hit that map boundary, I'm basically instantaneously dead. And the map boundary is not, like, indicated to the player in any way. And it really, really should be. Like, basically, when flying upwards or downwards, they need to double or triple the size of the up and down verticality of the game. And then from there, once they've done that, it basically needs to kind of, like, passively track... Oh, he almost hit me. It needs to kind of, like, passively track how close you are to that boundary, like, next to your reticle or with some kind of meter on screen so that you know when you have to pull up or down to avoid getting splashed and slowed down because when you hit the boundary, it basically forces you to slow down your jet and pull up, and the AI is just going to lay into you when that happens. It's going to be filthy. Uh, let's go ahead and get over here. All right, you're now dead. You are also dead. Combo counter starting to look good. Oh, this guy's fighting me up and down now. It's okay, I've got the armor to do it. We'll be all right. The ideal goal here is that you want to get it to the point where every time you kill a rogue, you're getting like 3,000. There we Oh, the wing leader was... I didn't realize there was a wing leader here. That's... I didn't realize there was an ace on the battlefield. Well, down he goes. He got me with some missiles right there, so my plate is looking pretty bad. But we did level up, so I can make it so that I get more scraps back whenever I pick up XP. I'll probably do that. Uh, one thing I would also kind of think about with this game... Oop. That was a really unfortunate spawn position that he just came in from. Oh, I'm not faster this time. I don't have the, the speed upgrade. That's not great. That's going to make fighting multi-frigate a little bit difficult, in my opinion. All right, let's splash a couple of these dudes. We're going to come in kind of... Ah, got me, dude. I was hoping I'd get away with it. I was trying to preserve that armor plate, but we've just got so many people on our tail right now, and I'm not very fast, and I'm not very agile because I haven't taken any of the upgrades, so I'm just getting absolutely buried right now. Let's maybe focus on getting a couple of the little guys just up and out of my butt cheeks for a second because they are up in there, man. 
Okay, got that rogue right there. Got that guy right there. Give him a couple missiles. Got that guy right there. Very nice. Okay, now we can turn... Oh, never mind. More just spawned. Doesn't even matter. Our timing was off. It's getting a little intense in here. But this is a pretty slick little roguelike. I think if they can get the balance issues sorted on out... And I think, oh yeah, the other suggestion that I was on, sorry, I got addle-brained. Uh, one thing I noticed is they've got kind of like this vampire survival style system where when you shoot down an enemy, in order to get your XP and bank it, you have to like go pick it up physically by yourself unless you have a perk that turns you into like a sky vacuum. I would actually, I would keep that for the scraps. Oh my god. Yup, everything is terrible. We're going down right here. There's just too many frigates. Too many frigates and too many auto cannons, man. They're everywhere. I don't even know how to approach this. Oh, they're all lumped up, too. Man. All right, he's critical. I think we just got to slow play this. Like, I don't see any other way to get around it. I would keep the scrap system, though. So, like, you pick up the scraps and it repairs your ship. I'm okay with that. But I think you should just get the XP the second that you kill somebody. Yikes. I don't even know what to do with this dude. There's so many auto cannon shots everywhere. Well, we got him, but yeah, I was going to say, there's just too many missiles up in the air. With four frigates that are overlaid by that, you really have kind of like, once you get up to like wave seven or wave eight, you've really got to make a tough decision as to whether you want to focus on like the elite fighters and aces that are chasing you down, because they are really solid at giving up a ridiculous amount of just pressure. Like, they might not be putting a lot of damage on you, but they will pressure you very heavily, and sometimes that pressure will affect your behavior, and in affecting your behavior, other AIs will capitalize on that. So if a missile is coming from, like, a certain direction, or someone is tail- or uh, someone is front-gunning you from a various direction, you're going to naturally kind of push in one direction or another, and I feel like some of the other AIs can kind of, like, predict that a little bit. And, like, they will lean into, like, your bank or whatever and punish while someone else is pinning you down with pressure. Conversely, the auto cannons that are on the frigates hit for just huge chunks of your armor. And that missile spam array that they do is also really gnarly and hard to get around. And so you've always got to be kind of, like, adaptive to the situation, I guess. But I think that's the fluidity and the organic nature that makes this game intense though and like fun to play and why I haven't fallen off of it even though I've gotten frustrated a couple times I'm not like frustrated with the game I'm frustrated with my skills like I need to get better you know this is this is definitely one of those get good titles outside of like certain things that may mess with your progression I feel like getting good is definitely like a necessity when you're playing this game let's go ahead and get that guy right there all right so we've got a level up actually one and a half levels in between here I suppose I will take scrap repair amount so that we get like 8% armor back instead of 4. Oh, this one's got an orbital installation. Cool. Uh, aside from the giant gunships and stuff you're going to be fighting in this title, which by the way, I think that's... If the developer ends up seeing this video, I think the big ship fights are the appeal of this game. Dogfighting these little guys over here is like fine, but the times with your game that I have absolutely had the most fun are when I'm fighting giant orbital installations and knocking chunks off of, like, space bases and stuff. I'm just going to throw that out there. I don't know why I didn't get my scrap right there. I feel like I should have got my scrap. Missile got him. That's good. I need to, like, get my armor back. Where are these dudes at? I was going to say, they're just, like, orbiting me right now. They're just, like, orbiting and lining up for a joust, like, as hard as they can. There's our level up. Okay, lost my hull right there. Don't even know what hit me, but that's fine. I, I do think the game could indicate threats that are coming in a little bit more solid, and I think the player should have a little bit more control over evasive actions. So I would recommend looking at something like Time Crisis here. Uh, there's no way to do, like, Aileron rolls or, like, barrel rolls as far as I can tell in this game. Not that I've seen so far anyways, uh, but I would like for there to be. Like, if you double tap A or you double tap D... When something is red on the screen, I kind of feel like that should cancel out whatever attack is coming from that red thing on the screen. Sort of like Time Crisis style, I guess. 
Like, right there, I saw that missile, but there was physically, like, nothing I could do to get out of the way of it. It was just like, you're getting hit by this missile, period. Just because of the place that it decided to stop when I came in on my strafing run. There we go. We'll knock that. We're down to one armor plate, though, on wave four, so it's basically over for us right now. This is not going to be a high score run. If it was me personally, I would just actually re-roll this right now. I would end the run and start over. Unless... Okay, you know how I was talking about sometimes you have to do, like, thrilling aeronautical feats of valor in order to unlock cool things in this game? I'm about to try to do it because this is one of the few ways that I've found that you are able to repair your craft is by breaking the bay doors on this tower right here. And then if you do a fly-through after breaking the bay door, there's a heel inside of there and we got it. You see? Did you see it? It was quick. Like, you have to know that it's there before you go for it. It's not one of those things you're just going to luck into. But we got one of our armor plates back. So far, that's one of the only ways I've seen to get an armor plate back is fighting orbital installations and doing that very, very, very slick dive through the center of them as they're exploding to grab a little heart icon. There is a repair thing on top of it, but I haven't tried to go for it yet. I don't know what the repair thing does on the top. I'm guessing it fills up your armor plate to max, since the heart that we picked up gives you one of your armor plates back, and it's much more aggressive to try to grab that. I This right here, uh, it says full repair. It's not actually full repairing you, so they should change the terminology on this. It should say, fills, fills current armor shard increases maximum armor. Uh, because it says full repair right there. The first time I took it, I assumed that it was going to give me all my armor plates back and I was going to be back at full health. Not the case. Uh, this does not give you armor plates back, despite the fact it says armored and despite the fact that it says full repair. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to fix your current armor plate and then increase the amount of armor that all armor plates contain for the rest of the run. I Armored seems to be... I, I don't want to take Armored right now, but Armored seems to be the thing. I, I need a, a... I'm on Rogues right now, and I'm still using the default gun. This is going to get really ugly really quickly. Kill rate is going to be at, like, an all-time low here. I'm just going to try to keep missiles and damage on this guy. There we go. We got his Interceptor, at least. And we got a whole bunch of rogues over here. Are they going to try to rotate and joust, or are they going to let me have this? You. You. Okay. Where's the next one? We got 28 seconds. Good. I got to shoot down these missiles, too. A little bit of damage right there. Some enemies have battle damage, so like the frigates and the rogues, uh, they have multiple stages of being damaged as you're going along. So keep that in mind as well. Sometimes you'll put a bunch of bullets on somebody and you'll say rogue damage like it did right there. By the way, hit markers and feedback in this game are done exceptionally well. This is a developer that knows the way to imply hits. And it feels very good shooting enemies in this game. Like it feels righteous. Oh, is that the wing leader? Okay. Ugh, there went our entire armor plate, man. Somebody got a good run off on us. Oh, we got this dude. He's on a bank. I was going to say, dude. He's on, like, a really aggressive bank right now. He's toast. Just picked the wrong moment to bank in front of me, brother. Uh, but by and large, this is a game that feels really good. It sounds really good. There are some balance issues, and I think there's kind of, like, a limit on the amount of content and perks and things that are available in the game. And I think that's the number one place that they need to work on is just getting more perks and more things into the game so that every run is a little bit more different, kind of lean into their roguelite elements that they're playing around with here. But it is a relentlessly original game. There's not a whole lot of people in the world right now that are making dogfighting roguelites that are mixed with vampire survivors wave-style combat systems. And I, I think for what it's trying to be, it's actually pretty good at it. I have not been too upset with the game so far. I felt like it was a, a purchase that was a good call. I paid for this one, by the way. This is one of those games that I splurged for. Nowadays, I don't really get comp too many games anymore. I, I buy a lot of them. Oh, man, that rogue. Just chewing on me right now. Just, ung, 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 just gnawing on me, man. I was going to say, I need, like, an agility upgrade or something, and we need it, like, right now. I can get Vector, or I can get the Gra or the Gru, or the Gao. I don't know if that's an R or an A. This is one of those kind of, like, 
inquit non-explanatory fonts that can be kind of hard to figure out. I was just complaining about my agility, but this would increase our DPS by a lot. Eh, agility, I guess. I don't know. I'll take the agility. All right, a little damage on the side of him right there. He just launched missile packs. There we go. I do feel more agile now. Good. Okay, two auto cannons. How are we going to do this? Okay, that worked out all right. I thought that strafe was probably going to be the end of me. That was a really aggressive strafe right there. But I'm trying to get the frigates off the field right now, I think, rather than waiting. Okay, so we got a critical frigate on the field right now. I think if we can get the gun off the top of him, we'll be in solid shape. Oof, there's a kill right there. That was a target of opportunity, though. I didn't even mean to get that guy. And he's like, well, he was where he was at the time that he was there. Okay, frigate's down. Go under. We're actually doing okay right now for the amount of... Oh, no, there's two more. I didn't kill fast enough, and now I'm regretting all my decisions. All right, fly off. Oh! 4% health. Got a missile off onto that guy's turret, but one bullet is going to splash us right now. So you know all those yellow things flying by. Um, those are not good for our health. Yeah, there it is. I've been blown in half. This is top dog. I, I think the game is great. So to summarize, I think the game needs more content. It needs more variety. It definitely needs some balance passes to make all the weapons equally useful. And also some of the enemies seem a little bit overly tough if you haven't gotten certain perks. Like I, I definitely feel like if by the rogue stage, I don't have a weapon upgrade, I'm hosed. And since it's random what comes up in the draft, it can be kind of hard to land those things every single time and so sometimes I get this little feeling of hopelessness when I get to the rogue stage where the enemy's HP effectively like doubles or triples and you're dealing with frigates and stuff like that that you need to be able to splash quickly otherwise things fall apart uh, so I would like to see the balance pass go through but it sounds like one of those things that the developer is already aware of I'd like to see the sky box and also the ground box be moved probably four or five times further away from the players so that when the AI inadvertently and accidentally locks you into a battle of verticality, uh, you aren't completely and totally hosed when you hit that boundary. And if they're not going to do that, they need to find some kind of way to demarcate where the upper skybox is and where the ground box is so that the player knows before they hit it so that they don't get punished for something that's invisible on the field of play. As of right now, I just try to avoid going up and down as much as possible because it's basically a game ender if you hit that boundary. But that is, a, I think, a very pressing issue with the design of the game that needs to be addressed uh, before this game would be like a hard recommend from me. It's just one of those little oversights that can be very, very difficult to deal with. But outside of the balance passes and the game needing more content, I think they've got a remarkably solid idea right here that knows what it is. It doesn't apologize for being what it is. And it seems to execute that vision very well. Like the guns feel good. The shooting feels good. The killing feels good. The getting killed feels good. I would like to see some kind of like a time crisis system added to the game, like I mentioned earlier, where like as a missile's approaching you, if you double tap A or double tap D, you'll do like an aileron roll or like a barrel roll. As part of like an animation, it'll cancel out whatever red bullets are on screen. Maybe with like a cooldown, which would give you another link to like upgrades for cooling that kind of stuff down. But honestly, the game is really good out of the box right now, as long as you understand that sometimes you are going to get a grid of enemies that are absolutely going to poo down your neck hole. And it's just kind of the way the game goes. After all, it's a roguelite. It's a game that's designed to be difficult and for you to get your skills up. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what is worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day. Today we were fooling around with a game called Top Dog that I sort of accidentally found while I was just cruising through the Steam lists. But I do think that this is very good and very promising as far as early access projects go. It's relentlessly original. There's not a whole lot of things out there like it. And so it's kind of an easy recommend as of right now, especially considering the fact that the developer has a scheduled history of releasing games and finishing early accesses. So going back through, this is not the developer's first rodeo. So I think your chances of abandonment 
or your chances of the developer just kind of like walking away are pretty slim on this one because it seems like he really cares about this genre and he's already completed multiple games that preceded this one so just something to keep in mind i'll see y'all tomorrow thank you for being here and don't forget to go to my discord i didn't even bring it up during the course of this video because i tend to stream the games on the channel that i play here on these videos in long form so that if you felt like 30 minutes was not enough like with this game I think 30 minutes was more than sufficient to get the idea across. But with some games, like heavy RPGs and whatnot, that can not be the case. And so anyways, I ping the Discord whenever I, I go live. Because Twitch's notifications, they told me that Twitch only notifies. I have like 100,000 followers on Twitch. You know how many people it notifies when I go live? It notifies 8% of them. It's, it's weird that their dashboard reports to me how bad they're doing at their job every single day. I'm like, ideally, shouldn't that go out to every follower? <laughs> like, let's assume for a moment that you're designing like a system that you don't hate and that you want to work. Wouldn't you want that to go out to all of the followers to get more people to come watch streams so that your company can be profitable? I don't know, but maybe I'm a crazy person in thinking that companies would want to be more profitable very difficult to stay. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Stay up on the chopping block. We were fooling around with Top Dog. Tomorrow it'll be something else. Thank you for sharing your time with me and I will catch you all later.